Yeah, cool. Yo, guys, so I'm here just organizing a structure here before I do my uh, video after this video. And, you know, one thing cool about doing this stuff and working with the NPC, you need to learn how to actually set up your actual system that you're going to work with. And one thing they really do is to know how to get rid of stuff. Like, I'm pressing B here, I get rid of that. And I got rid of the right hand side. I can press I and I get, other, get rid of the other side right there. And now, uh, when I want to do something else, like I use this entire space down here at the bottom, and I want to go, let's say, to drum program, I'll go right here to drum program. I'll select drum program and I can see the whole thing here, which is beautiful. I can get to see it and I can scroll up and down the drum program here, as you can see right now, as I move along this drum program. I can go from one side to the other. And I know what I need to do. I can see what I want to see. I, I can still see the Q-Link. I can get rid of that. I can get rid of the pads. I can get rid of the project. And I would just see this program. But the beauty of it is that I can see what's in front of me much easier now and get a hold of it. So it's always good to do that. Now also, as you watch this video series, please subscribe. We're going to have a lot of stuff in the series. We're putting a lot of stuff every day. We're going to put a lot of stuff in there. It might be two or three today or two or three tomorrow. You never know. But for sure, one a day. Any questions, hit me up in the bottom. But if you subscribe, you'll support the channel. We'll get many more viewers. At the same time, it'll help YouTube to help push our videos out as we add more videos uh, over the next several months to have more fun playing with gear. Okay, so I got something I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna try and do some stuff with this stuff here right here. So we got something I'm doing something with right now, and I wanna get this thing going on. So uh, what I really wanna do is uh, come in here, and I want to do some edits. So we did sequence edits in the last video. This one we're gonna do some other stuff. We're gonna do track edits. So I can select all. I can select everything in that track. As you can see, obviously they all have white borders around them. I can erase them if I want to. So that's for the edit. Let me go down to track and that's that. I can deselect. Whoa, I got rid of selecting them. I deselected them. Whew, that was too intense. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Now here I've got something I wanna do. I can clear all, so I can go to clear everything in there, but only if I deselect it, so clear track. I can clear this track out. So if I want to, I can say clear it, and that track is gone, and you're like, oh my God, but no, you come here and you wanna undo that. That's right back again, okay? We have these undos, we love those things, of course, and then of course I go back, hit the track again, and I wanna look at something else. I wanna look at this explode function. This is kinda of really cool. Now, when you have a song, let's say, I got one, let's say one whole just, not a song, but this beat here, for example. Got this beat going on here, and I just wanna separate all this stuff. There's so much going on in here, I wanna separate it and have it as a separate track, maybe, right? And I can only see the pads here. So, for example, if I come in and hit a pad, that pad is selected, we see the pad. The reason why that happens is because right down here, I go to channel, I will just see the channel. So no matter what pad I hit, it will always be that channel and I'll see the channel. In this channel, we have a compressor, I can add effects here, right? And so I can go to here and I can see the pads, important. Now what I wanna do is take each pad and have a separate track. Like here you'll see, this says the beat right here, right? That's the beat, and then the rest of this is nothing, no more tracks. So what we want to do, we want to take all these pads and put them on separate tracks. That's what I mean by explode it out. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say, I want to explode it out, so let's go to here. And now I'm going to go and go to track. I get the track here, I'm going to explode. Boom, explode. I see nothing yet, so let's go right to here. See, it did it so quickly. That's kind of cool, right? It just does it. So it's everything's on a separate track now. Now, this is so really cool. Now, you really don't see why that's so cool. But if I go to here and I get my mixer going on, and I'm going to go here and click on the exploded out, or expand this out to full view. Boom, I got my whole mixer here. And now I can see I got tracks. So I can see I got, this is just the pads right here. I can tell you that because I come to here, I select that, these are the pads, right? And we know these pads all have something on them somewhere. 
and they lead to this mixer right here, which is kind of cool. And then if I want to see my MIDI, these are my MIDI tracks. If I press play here, you will see all the tracks. Everything is a track now. See that? And let's let me go up here and move a little bit more. Now we can see that everything has its own track. Now let me go to here at the very end. This is the beat. It's been muted. So I can mute stuff. Matter of fact, let's do this first. I'm going to show you that this beat is still here. That's important for you to understand. That beat is, I just sold that beat. It's soloed. Now, I'm going to unsolo it. I'm going to start to solo some more. I'm going to actually mute more stuff here in this whole session. You hear me? I'm muting stuff now. I'm just muting stuff out. Now, why I like this is because I have the names of each one of these tracks down here, which I prefer to see. I can see how everything's working pretty much. And I like to mix this way with my tracks like this. Keep this the way it is as pads, but I would love to have each sound a separate track. And this makes it cool because I can also have all ports here, input, output, or whatever, but it's very cool for me to have it this way. And if you like this, you can always do this yourself. But for me, I like to do this with some tracks so I have them all separated. I come back in. I can bring stuff back in if I want to bring them in. I like that. And I can do the same thing here. Have the effects here. If I prefer to do it like this, I can mix it, set my pans up. I can do whatever I want to do. If I want to do something, go back and record like right here. Boom, record right there if I want to. So I like that because I can record right here. Meanwhile, if I have his pads, I can't really do that. So I just so I can record into them easily and change them as I move around. And this is why I will explode tracks out in my session sometimes. Now I'm going to go back to my original session, which is right here. It still sounds the same, but as I go through other tracks, you'll see they're all right here. We've lost nothing. I can also delete this one if I want to, the main one. And that's how it works. I'm going to explode tracks out in your session. I want to point out one more thing that once you do explode your tracks out and you go back to undo, you'll notice here that, of course, your tracks are gone because the names are gone. And this other one is the main one is still there. But you'll also notice that now these tracks are available or at least they were actually you just see that before because now it says track and nothing's on them. If I go to here, nothing's on it. So before, nothing was actually used, it was just one track. But now these tracks were used, then I did an undo, and now you see what happens. So that's pretty cool. Pretty simple stuff right there. Now, what I want to do next now, I'm going to sort of look back here into edit and go to track. And we're going to look at something here called event double speed. So let me select my correct track, which is this beat track here. And then I'm going to go back to here and go back to track and then go back to here. And we're going to look at double speed. And now I'll play it back. Oh, that's double speed, right? Okay, that's enough of that. And let's undo that for sure. We'll undo that one. And next, I want to go back to edit to track again and go across here. I'm going to get, let's see. Let's do half speed. Let's events at half speed. Boom. You get the idea. But the samples do not go half speed. Be aware of that. Once they're warped out totally, they're not going to do that. And there's actually no way for them to do it anyway, because you see right here, this remains the same. It just change the events speed within this whole sequence. So we'll go back to here. We'll see it now. See, before it was eight, now it's 16. And that's what the half speed does. I'll go back here to edit. Matter of fact, let's undo that first. There we go. Now we're back to eight again. And we'll see edit here. And I'm gonna go to split events. I can split events. 
into two events, into four, into five, into six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, that's a lot of events. Split events. So we split events into four. Okay, let's do it. No note events can be split, so you can't do that. So splitting events, I would split these events up into some of the parameter, right? I'm not doing that. Let's go back. Let's undo this. There we go. Let's go back to here. Now you notice also something that happened also. That now you'll see this has changed totally here once I did the half speed and came back in half speed, but then we lost the velocity settings. So I normally don't do half speed, I don't do the slow speed or up tempo or split events. I do none of that stuff, okay? Uh, you can look and see if you wanna try and do something, but I never do that. So we're gonna go back to here. And next we have here, next track, right? So I can go to next track. I need to press command and the bracket sign. So either bracket sign, I guess will do that. So I can come to here, for example, let this play from the top. I'll press command, the bracket sign. It goes to the next track two, track three, track four, track five. And I go backwards, four, three, two, one. Right back on it. But notice when I do go next track, next track, what happens? We don't hear the track before that. So uh, be aware of that too as well. We're skipping through tracks. Now, we also want to look at something else here in the edit and the tracks. And we go right down here. We can export as a mini track. I can bounce to sample. I can bounce to new audio. That's pretty simple to do. You can also do that from right over here. You go to here, you can take this, click on that, and I have the ability to actually export as a MIDI file. And here I can come to right here, I can click on this, and it's, it's making a file right now. And once it does, this turns red. And now I can drag that to my desktop and use it. So for example, let's pull this down. What's this behind here? I have no idea. Let's take this out of here, my video editing. And let's go here, we're gonna pull this off of here and drag this up to here. And I just dragged that as a MIDI file. So I can also come to here. I click it twice. And now this has turned red right here. And now I can drag it as a MIDI file. Let's grab this. I have to press do it. Okay, good. So I did it. Loading the beat. Great, great, great. So I come to here now. I'll just drag it now as a MIDI file, and boom, see that beat MIDI. I have the MIDI file for it totally. It makes it easy to do. So if I wanna make a MIDI file, send someone a MIDI file something, I could do that. If I wanna hear that back, it'll play about the same thing that's here right here.